Let's go ahead and take our seats. I'll call the special committee, special council committee meeting, August 25th, 2015, to order. First item on the agenda is under administration. Mr. Howard? Uh, yes, Mayor. Um, several, weeks, several weeks ago, we uh, brought up the uh, thought of recodification uh, of our ordinances. And uh, following, that, following that meeting, there seemed to be a lot of confusion among uh, city council about uh, uh, the definition of recodification and uh, how, uh, how this all works out. And so we even, so I went and met with Frank and Frank asked Frank if I could meet with somebody from American Legal to uh, go over, get some, get some of my questions answered. And so I met with Frank and uh, Mayor, Mayor, uh, Representative Mr. Fromer, who was, and uh, they, uh, they gave me a good lesson on uh, what recodification was all about. And then, so I decided, well, I'd, I'd like to have American Legal come in to the council for a special uh, committee meeting to address and let us know, let the full, full council members know what recodification was, how this, how this process goes on, and uh, let them explain that stuff, what, they, what, what they actually do at that point. So we brought our expert in. I'm going to turn it over to Frank. Frank. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Mr. Bauhauer. Bullhauer. Bullhauer is with American Legal. And uh, at my request and Bill's request, he agreed to come over and give some better explanation than I did last time about the recodification and the difference between that and a legal review. Um, Welcome. Do you want me to go ahead? Or? Yeah. Okay. Um, I am Ray Bullhauer. I'm a staff attorney with American Legal. Um, I met with some of you previously, and then Bill, um, you met with Richard Frommeyer, who was uh, in my place while I was out of town. Um, in any case, so like I said, I'm one of the attorneys, and I, I don't know. I have copies. I don't know if you need copies of the proposals. If you need, you know, I've made some extra copies. Just let me know. Um, let me give you just a brief little history, though, about American Legal and the city. We began publishing updates to the city code of ordinances probably about 15 years ago. Uh, prior to that, the code was published by Burlington Publishing Corporation, which has, we acquired them. Um, they wanted to get out of the business. So they were the ones who were doing your code before us. We took it on after it was already established, and we've been updating it for like the last 15 years. But um, I, we, didn't, we weren't the original ones. So um, it's been, the original code was published, this version of the code, this edition was published in 1986. So it's almost 30 years now that it was published. And um, a recodification is something that's done by cities every once in a while to do a new edition, basically. So the 1986 code was not your first code. You had one prior to that, I believe, as well, maybe a couple. Um, so it's common to do these recodifications. But there's also a process of a legal review as well. So we had two proposals, one for a legal review and one for a complete recodification, which includes that legal review. Uh, the legal review, which um, we presented, is $2,500, and that's one of our staff attorneys who's licensed in Kentucky would review the code. Uh, she would look for, and I say she because we have one specifically Kentucky attorney that we would assign it to. Uh, Christy Bonnock would be the one. Uh, she's done many, many, many reviews. Um, she would look for conflicts in the code that have developed over those 30 years. And, you know, that can happen. You pass something um, 30 years ago, you pass something 10 years ago, you pass something 5 years ago, and they may be in different parts of the code, and, you know, without knowing it, there may be some conflicts there. So she will look for conflicts in the code itself between those ordinances or those sections. She would also then compare it to state statute. Uh, this is looking for things that are in conflict with the state that may have arisen uh, over the time where they were fine at one point when they were put into the code, but the state has changed something and now you have a conflict. So she would also look for those. And she would also, there's a lot of citations in your code book. She would also update those. The state sometimes changes their citations and those may not have been changed in your code over time. Um, so those are some other things that need to be updated. Now she would do that comprehensive review and put it together in a written legal report and then she would also be able to meet with you as well to discuss it. Um, that process takes about three to four months. Um, I'll be honest with you, it's not going to take her three to four months, but once it gets into the queue of other projects. Our recodifications, like I said, also include legal reviews, and we have about 18 of those legal reviews ahead of this one, so it does take time to schedule it. Um, so.
we would take about three to four months to get it completed for you. The, the big thing about the uh, legal review is we make suggestions and recommendations, but we don't implement those because we would need your okay to do that. With that legal report, we're not gonna do any editing work. You would take the report itself and any recommendations that you want to accept, you would then pass an ordinance to make those um, and then provide those ordinances to us to uh, update the code book. And that's a difference with the recodification. The recodification, um, it is, it's more expensive, it's about $16,875. That includes that legal report. It also kind of includes another review because what we're going to do is completely republish the code book. So we turn it over to one of our editors, who many of them are also attorneys, um, to also do a draft of that new code book. And while that person is doing that draft, they are also going to review the code book, looking for things that they find. And that can be grammar, it can be um, things like that, but it can also be things like we see a fine or a fee in there that looks really old. It, might, it may be legal, but it looks really old and we want to draw that to your attention. That editor is going to touch every page in that code book uh, through the republication process. There's also, um, you know, they may look for grammar consistencies that have arisen, maybe some ordinances in the past weren't written as well as they could be, and we, this is a chance to correct that as well. You just don't know until you actually go through the book. Um, we, with the recodification, will also incorporate any new ordinances that you have. Right now, we do updates to the codebook um, when you provide us ordinances. We would include those in that cost as well. Typically, when you do a recodification, you kind of stop the update process until that recodification is completed, because otherwise you'd be changing the code as we're trying to review it. Um, so whatever you spend on those updates are really going to be covered now by that recodification. That draft by the editor will take about six months to complete. And once that draft is completed, then our attorney will also do that legal review that we talked about. And she will incorporate any comments from the editor as well. So you, you'll get more of an editorial and legal report at that point. When you get the draft and the legal report, um, we recommend that you kind of split that up among departments so that the police department can review the traffic provisions or criminal provisions, public works reviews theirs, because they're the ones that are most familiar with how things work in the city and their departments. So this is a really good opportunity for the city personnel to also stop and take a look at what's in the code and see if it reflects daily practices. Things might have changed over time. Yes, 20 years ago you sent out utility bills on the first of the month, now you send them out on the 15th of the month. Uh, you guys would know that, not us. So that's a good time to sit down and actually review it. The big difference is now incorporating these changes. Any recommendations or suggestions we make that you accept in the legal report, any changes that you want to be made because you've looked at now your daily practices don't match what's in the book, those are usually just, those are all included in our editing work. So we include all those changes in the final version of the code. So that's the big difference. You don't have to pass a separate ordinance for each little change you usually adopt it as one when you adopt the new code book. It's the adopting ordinance, and you're adopting this as your new code. Um, this is the practice probably 99% of all the clients we work with. Instead of trying to adopt a new ordinance for every little change, which will delay you, it'll probably cost you more overall. Um, it'll cost you time, it'll cost you money. This is all included in the recodification, and that's part of the reason why it, it is more costly. It does include all that extra work. We also create in the new code, by the way, a, a table at the back of the code that'll say the 1986 code to the 2015 code. And it'll tell you the old code section to where it is in the new code. You probably won't have a lot of those changes. You probably will have mostly, we'll use the same numbering. We like the way it's set up. But you're, there may be some changes. Um, right now when we update a chapter, if you have a new provision, a lot of times it has to be tucked onto the end because there's no room to put it anywhere else, and it may not make sense. So the recodification allows you to actually reorganize a little bit to make things a little more smooth, uh, smoother in the book as well. So that PR table on the back will give you a reference if you want to find out, okay, I know that 1986 code section, where is it in the new code? Um, also, uh, we will recreate the online version from scratch because you have a new code version, we'll recreate that as well. And that's, that's one of those options, I believe, that's in the um, proposal. The, the other thing, it is more costly, so we also don't invoice you all at once, as we would with a legal report. You spread it.
spread out over time. Um, some down in the beginning, some down when you get that draft six months later, and then the rest at the end. So it'll usually fall over two fiscal years. If you want to budget that way, you usually don't have to budget all of it at once, and we're open to any kind of other flexible billing you need. Um, all I can tell you is, you know, we don't do a lot of just legal reviews. Um, we do one or two a year, because most of them are part of recodification. And I would say, if you were doing this every five, 10 years as a legal review, maybe fine. But since your code is 30 years out of date, I would definitely say I think a recodification would benefit you more than just that legal re review. But I mean, that is your decision. So um, that's just my professional. I've been in the business 20 years. And so normally, when a code's 30 years old, that's a complete recod recodification or republication is usually what it is. <laughs> so I mean, that's my brief difference between the two. Um, I'm definitely open to all questions. Yes. First of all, thank you so much for explaining it. Um, and um, so, like you said, since it's been 30 years, you would recommend doing this? I would. I mean, anytime I hear 30 years, I'm thinking, uh, you, sh you really don't want to have a 1986 edition that you're still referring to and you're doing a Lee review on because then you've got all these changes to make. Um, and before we do the review, I can't really tell you how many changes there are going to be. Um, but, I mean, the other part, which is not the reason to do recodification, but it's a benefit, is that we'll improve the appearance of your codebook as well. Um, you have a courier font, which is like a typewriter, and um, just it'll look better as well, which may not, like I said, that's not the reason to do it, but it's a benefit as well. So, like, um, we have an ordinance, it's a nuisance ordinance or something, and let's say it was implemented 20 years ago, and then we fine-tuned it a little bit 10 years later and then added some more stuff so it's like just added on. Mm -hmm. So what you would do is you would take that one ordinance and make it one. Well, you know, those, that's what we've done with the supplementation. Um, when you have a section in your code book, typically, I mean, you can do it two ways. You can pass new ordinances that say, I'm amending that code section. Or you can say, I'm amending this ordinance. Um, we see it both ways. But what our goal is to try to take all those ordinances that amend each other and form them into one current law that's what we've been doing for the past 16 years. Um, so that's already, in essence, being done. But yes, if you have, let's say you have five ordinances right now that haven't been added to the code, it could be a subject matter that you just never want to codify it, or it could be five new ordinances. We'll combine them all into one current um, body of law. Then make it more user-friendly to the public, too. Yeah, I mean, that's obviously user-friendly. I mean, a code book itself is user-friendly versus just having ordinances because you want them to know what is the current status of the law and not what are five things that you have to look up. And if we didn't do this and we just did the $2,500 thing, you would tell us things that were duplicated or needed to be, and then we would have to have Frank and Jack read right, the right. which costs money. Right, and that would be done at the supplement rate, which is what you're paying now when you send us new ordinances. Um, and you're charged by how many pages are affected. So you might have a three-page ordinance that might affect 20 pages because it's saying you need to delete this, remove that, and do that. So it, it could end up to be being a lot of pages where the recodification that is included, and you also get a draft of those changes as well. Um, but that is, I think, one of the biggest differences. And weighing the cost, <clears throat> my guess is that the recodification overall would end up being more economical than making those changes bit by bit. Yeah, especially after 30 years. Yeah. Thank well, you. just I just want to clarify. I mean, we have been updating it, but yes, 30 years is a long time not to have a recodification. Thank you. Renee. Renee. Is there any kind of a guarantee with this when you get finished? As to? That what you've done is correct and that the city's not going to get because you caught all the mistakes? Well, I mean, there's no, I don't make guarantees. I'm, you know, I don't know that many people that make guarantees, but we do have professional liability insurance and we've never had to use it. You know, I mean, we have a licensed attorney who's been at the, business, or at the company for more than 20 years, more than I have. She works in Kentucky, she lives in Kentucky, she works in Kentucky. Um, that's the majority of what she works on. You know, everybody's human, so I can't get a, you a perfect guarantee. But I don't think you'll find anybody else, any other company, codification company, that does a better job with the legal review in this state. But you're saying if there is a problem, then you're going to look at it, or if there's a problem, it's... Our goal is to find those conflicts, to find any... We'll also look for, like, constitutional issues that might pop up as well. Um, you know, we're not going to sit down and compare to every federal statute. But there are some 
that may come to mind, especially with what she knows in Kentucky, that if we see something that we think is wrong, we'll bring it up. I mean, an example is, you know, uh, railroads are usually our, our federal uh, domain, and, you know, a lot of times municipalities can't do a lot with those. Um, you know, that's a federal issue. Um, freedom of speech, if we think you're infringing on that. Curfews a lot of time. Um, we see curfews that aren't correct because they don't have exceptions for working and so on. And that's more of a constitutional or federal issue, but yeah, she's looking for those as well. Mm -hmm. Patty? It sounds like a, like a no-brainer to yeah. me. I think it sounds like good housekeeping. I mean, I think that's a good word. It is good housekeeping. I mean, if it were 10 years, I would say you probably don't need it. But 30 years is a long time. I guess my next question would be to Jack and Frank. You know, go with the lower amount and throw the rest in your lap? Or? Well, I'm going to jump in here because I've, I've changed my mind since we spoke last. Or since, and I wouldn't say changed my mind, but I was not aware when we met that you guys were going to go ahead and process all of those changes. Mm -hmm. that, that to me, that's a significant yeah. difference that just, quite frankly, either I didn't hear when we met right. or you didn't emphasize well, that part of it. And I'll tell you, when we met, it was really a different issue, and I brought in the recodification as my right. suggestion. Was this, I, fair. So I think the fact that, that they would be making all of those changes and and, and we package it into one right. ordinance to make all of those changes, um, I, I think is huge. I mean, that's a significant change than when I first saw this issue. So, and I, I will tell you, I mean, we do have people that go for the recodification and will say, oh, don't I need to pass each one of these by a separate ordinance, these recommendations, because they're separate subjects or whatever. And um, we never had any one of them follow through doing that once they talked to us. It's just not the practice in the industry. You, you pass an adopting ordinance saying this is your new code. Um, otherwise, I think you'd be passing new ordinances you know, for many, many, many months to come if you did it that way. Right. Oh, yeah. <coughs> your meetings will get a lot longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've always felt that the recodification, <coughs> pardon me, was the correct decision. Uh, unfortunately, I apparently didn't convey my, my uh, thoughts very well at the last committee meeting. Excuse me. The sound effects help. That kind of adds. <laughs> yeah. I got, really, I got really relaxed while you were saying that. And your theme song? No. Uh, that's incoming. <coughs> You know, and let me just throw you in this get just turned off. Um, but in just, any event, sorry. The, let me continue, Patty. They, sure. they, um, what, cons what, what influenced me more than anything else was <coughs> the fact that after the legal review is done, uh, something has to be done with it. Either Jack or me or both of us have to go through it and do what American Legal is proposing that they do. Um, either way, it's going to cost the city some additional money. And I think the additional money is going to be, based on my experience, some of it. Very soothing. It is. Wow. <laughs> I gotta get that. Yeah, that's a great ringtone. Yeah, is that your kids calling? <laughs> Either way, something has to be done with that product. We can do it between ourselves, I, I, I guess, um, but I'm pretty sure that, I'm more than pretty sure, I'm very sure that the cost of doing that without, outside of the reconification probably is going to cost you more that way than doing the recodification. That's that's point number one. Uh, and I'm in favor of the recodification. I was before and I still am. I hope I can explain it better. The second point is that, as Mr. Bullhauser indicated, or however indicated, they've been doing this for years and years and years. Right. It's their expertise. Sure. Sure. I'm not going to tell you that I can do that as well as they can do it. They're clearly can do it. 
do it better and you'll get a better job. Third, they have the, the uh, ability to put that new code online and to maintain it. On the cost issue, too, obviously um, we wouldn't have to be publishing and, you know, 40 changes and okay. so, so the actual right. cost um, is beyond legal. It's, it's the publication cost, which right. can be quite right. significant. Right, and I will tell you too, you know, we, we provide you that draft, and like I said, we try to delay any updates during that time because we're trying to work with a set document and not having new things. But any ordinances that you adopt, you send them to us, we'll get them in the draft as long as we can, and any that we don't make into the draft will go into the final version. So you can still send us ordinances as you adopt them. They'll go into that final version and they won't affect that price. Whereas if you were updating, you'd be paying for that editing work. So it's, it's kind of thrown in there as well. So you know, it could be nine months to a year's worth of ordinances that are also included. There's another point I'd like to make, which I think is more the most important. <clears throat> and I want to ask you a question first before I get into that. But it's my understanding after you finish the review, <coughs> provide it to the city, the city starts work on it, that if we do the reconification, your assistance is available for meetings with Jack and I, yeah, I mean, meetings with department heads. Right, you're right. We, we throw in a meeting with our attorney who drafts the report, because that's the person you want to talk to. Um, normally we charge for transportation, but we would in this case, since you're so close. Um, and then that person is also always available by phone or email as well outside of, you know, conferences. Okay. But my point is that assistance with the reconification is at no extra cost. That assistance with the legal research, you pay for it. And I am, I bet a lot of money that at the end product, if you do not do the reconification, <coughs> will cost you more. So, from my standpoint, it, the recodification is best. JD? My comment is that the night we had the meeting, I had no clue we were 30 years behind. And then I talked to Frank, because I, I had no idea what everybody's looking like. We had no idea what we were talking about. <laughs> Frank kind of explained it to me. Now I'm glad this gentleman came and finally explained something to us. Right. Now we all understand what we're trying to do. And, I think it's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Renee? I would like to make a personal thank you to Bill and Kathy for actually having this <clears throat> Oh, absolutely. That was a great idea. Kudos to you guys. Because yeah. Yeah. I was like 2500 to $16,000. Oh, yeah, no way. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That is, I, you know? Oh, and I'm very aware of cost consciousness for cities. Um, and, you know, a lot of times when people say, okay, we want to do a long update, too, I'm like, you know what, let me look at it to see which I think will save you money. I think in the long run this will save you money because it's going to, eventually you're going to need to do it anyway. You know, say you wait till 40 years, um, it's still going to cost you the money, but I think you might as well get it done now um, because it probably, the, pri the price is probably not going to go down in 10 years. I don't know of anything that has. Except stuff. Yeah, except the market. Also, after you get <coughs> Right, exactly. And I, like I said, I think with the recodification, that's the best time to have departments also take a look at what we present. Um, I don't think they're going to sit down and take a look at things unless there's this product in front of them saying, this is going to be your new code. Take a look at it and let me know if there's any changes. Because if, they, if they're willing to do that otherwise, then why wouldn't they have done it already? Um, so the recodification kind of pushes people to say, okay, this is going to be our new <laughs> code book. Let us take a good look and see what needs to be in there for our citizens as well, because you guys know what goes on day to day, whereas we don't know that kind of stuff. Well, with that in mind, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, prepare the paperwork to have legal, American Legal come out and start the recodification process. Does this require a vote? Or is this? I'll come, it should come back as a recommendation from the administration tonight yeah. at the next council meeting. It would be a recommendation. Okay. And authorize the mayor to enter into the contract. Do you need any more copies? I don't know if everybody has copies. If they, I, I have made a number of copies I can leave with you if you want. Anybody interested? Yes. Okay. And mayor? <laughs> Mayor, I just want, I just want to yes, uh, personally thank Frank for uh, bringing American League win to me when I was went to a
Dolph was panicking about this uh, about three or four weeks ago. So, <laughs> so uh, thank you, Frank. Thank right, you. Thank you. All right. With that, with that, then, can we move on to the next item? Okay. There's. Uh, I need one. Here, I got. I got more. Uh, discussion on the uh, Norfolk Southern Railroad overpass. And yeah, that's something that I wanted to okay. um, talk about a little bit. You know, as we have we've talked about, um, we had applied for a grant to um, repair the the overpass, or at least um, try to dress it up, make it look a little nicer. And that, that grant was turned down. It was based on, um, the grant was based on abating the hazardous material, the lead paint on it. Um, and yeah, they didn't think that, it, they didn't think we qualified for that grant. So we still wanna go ahead and proceed with something. Um, maybe it's not quite to the extent that we were looking at before of taking off all the lead um, we've, we've looked at other options where we can still paint the face of the bridge. Um, really what we would notice, in fact, um, a couple of the, the contractors that looked at the painting there said that we really don't get the bang for the buck in, in dressing up the underside of the bridge. That's where a lion's share of the work is. Mm -hmm. Up underneath there, all that structure and all the... All the, the um, stiffeners and bracing and bridging and angles, that's where a lot of the work is. Um, we could dress it up, make it look nicer for about a third of the cost without having to get into all that. So one of my ideas, or I, one of the things that we've kicked around and talked about was trying to, trying to figure out a way that we can still do this without without having to burden, you know, without having to pay for it with tax dollars. And so we've talked about options of maybe um, trying to get corporate sponsors and then maybe even have signage on either side of the bridge where we could um, display their names, let, let 26,000 people a day who pass through there know that some of these companies have involvement with it. Some of the ideas. Ultimately though, if we're going to try to pursue any of this, we really need to fine tune some plans engineering wise to see what we can do, you know, to see what the extent of the work is that we can do and what, what can be, what would be acceptable. Mr. Biox is. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, like the mayor said, he's been running with the ball for a while and uh, found out a lot of information and, and found out some of the issues that's, that are out there. We had a, he decided to have a strategy meeting yesterday with Mark and David and I to talk about how to pursue this further. He expressed his uh, ideas to us about the sponsorship and we thought it was a great idea. However, we discussed a problem with traffic management, uh, regulations, uh, permitting, uh, specifications, uh, management of airborne uh, material during the, the blasting of the of the uh, corrosion on the bridge, and the outcome of it was yesterday we decided that uh, I should call the highway department and and see what kind of assistance we might get from them. The mayor's already talked to the railroad, and there is going to be possibly some assistance from them. In, in the way of managing the uh, uh, train traffic, uh, the safety activity uh, in and around the, the tracks. So I committed yesterday to, to make that call. I, I called the district engineer, Rob Hands, this morning. We had a long conversation. I expressed the interest of the mayor and the city council to see some beautification of the underpass. He expressed the same thing the railroad did, that they're not in the beautification business, <laughs> but uh, he understood your interest. And so I suggested to him that maybe they could contribute in not necessarily dollars, but there's a number of very expensive <laughs> services that could be provided by them. Uh, one is a
traffic management plan that you would have to hire a consultant to do a traffic management plan to how to handle the traffic. Uh, secondly, the, the working period of time that you, you could actually do it, uh, the possibility of detours. Also, the highway department does, in fact, maintain bridges their own, so they certainly have specifications of how to deal with that kind of thing. So we wouldn't have to necessarily get a consultant to prepare those. And also, we obviously have to deal with them for permits. So after that long expiration, explanation for me of our uh, need to have them help us, uh, he did express to me that I could explain to you tonight that they would be willing to work with us, uh, meet with us in regard to possibly doing the traffic management plan. Actually, they would do an assessment of the underpass for us, determine some of the things that we need, what they think we need to, to do, not only with the painting, but also with the abutments and the wing walls and the issues that we discussed yesterday with the seepage coming through the walls that were creating a an issue with the pedestrians going through there and, and hopefully reduce the maintenance responsibility on this part of the city because we have to clean it out a lot. So he said to tell you that they will cooperate in both of those areas. So I think that's a great move forward. And I think that uh, we can see an opportunity to eventually come up with some numbers that you can consider in your budget process along with trying to get <coughs> sponsorships. So be my recommendation we continue to work with the highway department to get them to help us That's and to get awesome. back to you as soon as we can with some strong numbers that we can use for both budget purposes and, and dealing with sponsorship awesome i don't know if david remembers but i many years ago when i was the head of the renaissance <coughs> committee i did a lot of research on the bridge because needless to say, it's still the same damn eyesore it was back then. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, I did a lot of research about enclosing it in lieu of going through all of the things that were concerned about the lead-based paint and whatever. And they have some beautiful stuff out there. I agree. I think that would be probably the easiest and most cost-effective way of addressing it, and I have talked that through with Norfolk Southern, and they said, absolutely no way, no how. Ah. They said that they inspect that bridge, believe it or not, at least once a week. All the connections, all the rivets, all the fasteners, all the welds, oh, and, if we, and if we cover it, they, if we cover it, then they say they can't see gotcha. that. So, yeah. yeah. And another thing is the bridge down in Covington on Pike Street. They did a phenomenal job yeah. with that. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I have. But they had the school children come in and paint murals on either side. And just some ideas to throw yeah. out there. Yep. Shorty wants to talk. Green. <laughs> I can't see you. <laughs> no, you can't. <coughs> Green's in the way. The only problem I have with sponsorships is I don't want it to look like a giant billboard on each right. side. And I think that would take away from trying to make it look better. Yeah, and I think that's part of what this would be, too. Um, one, figuring out the size of the signage, but also figuring out how we can do it tastefully. Yeah, we don't want to have 20 different logos. Yeah. However, um, I, I will say Sherwin-Williams has said if they can put their logo somewhere around there, they'll provide all the, print, all the paint for no cost. Oh, my Not gosh. Bad. Wow. How about the wrong Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one of the areas where we're thinking that we could put some kind of sign. Yeah, right above the rock wall and below the Boone Kenton wall. <coughs> Mr. Benhoff. When you and I and Jim, we went up to the senior home up in Madisonville, and we're looking at what they did up there, right up the road from there, they had the same type <coughs> underpass we had. And Madisonville just did theirs this past spring I, I've, I've been online trying to find out how they did it i've called up there a couple times no one's ever called me back would it be worth our interest to contact them to see how they got theirs done i mean it's gorgeous it made all the news it made uh it made uh usa today it made cnn i mean it was gorgeous what they did to it and it's right as you 
go into Madisonville, in the, in the town of Madisonville, is you're going up the hill and you square off. We stopped at the bottom of the hill is where we were at. And I told David about it. Like I said, I've been online. I've called them. I just can't get anywhere. You know? Well, I think, it, I think it's important that we get to the point where no matter what we do, with design, obviously enclosures out, but the issue is we have 26,000 cars a day going through there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this months ago when I told you that you can't expect to have tractor trailers going through against each other on one side of that. And it has to be bagged. You have to bag <laughs> that thing to paint it and strip it because you can't allow the, the grit to come off of it and get into the sewer system and you can't allow the airborne material to get out in the air. Mm -hmm. So to do that, we have to have a, a traffic plan of how to manage that oh, yeah. traffic. And that's where the highway department has to be the player in this thing because no matter how we approach it, we'd have to get a permit from them. Right. And so why would we we'd spend the money to have somebody develop a traffic analysis of it, present it to them, and then say, well, you know, this is not a good idea. We don't think that's going to work. <coughs> let's them help us, and they've committed to do it. So let's I do it. I, I awesome. have no problem at all. Great. Good job, Jim. I have no problem getting sponsors either. Their work on those bridges in Cincinnati. Jim, I want, I want to ask Jim a question. Is there any way that, um, you know, when they come through with the resurfacing, now the highway's coming through and they're doing Erlanger, I guess, all the way to um, Turnpike? All the way to Ewing Boulevard. Yeah. Ewing Boulevard. Okay, so are they, is there anything that can be done in preparation <coughs> for the train trestle, or? No. The only thing that they're going to do is they're going to they're going to do some preparation of what's under the ground. <coughs> To make, to make sure that the storm sewer system was put in in the early part of the century, uh, which still doesn't have cavities around it that's allowing all those chuck holes to show up at the pavement. Remember I told you, I told them that when I went met with them in the pre-construction meeting, I don't want to be calling them back two years from now and say there's holes in that pavement again, so we, let's do it right the first time. But that's, that's not the way the preparation is going to work. What's going to probably happen is because it has to be tented, and part of it will be one side at a time, they'll probably have a tractor trailer, a flatbed tractor trailer with scaffolding on it. <coughs> It'll come in and block that side, maybe in there, it's going to be at nighttime. And they'll put the, the drapes up, and it'll work, and then they'll pull that scaffolding back out there and open the traffic back up. But then how do you manage the traffic that's there during that period of time? That's going to be the tough part. The mayor had an idea that I kind of knocked him back on yesterday. He, he said, well, we can't, can't we detour it around another street? Well, sure, but you can't get, we've, we've had that happen when the railroad's working down there. We track, had tractor trailers go back there on Mary Street and get stuck. Oh, and yeah. Front yard yeah, I remember and get around that, that way. Yeah. So we, we have to be able to have a plan that the highway department's going to accept. Because that is a state and federal highway. It's a U.S. 25 and 42. We're not talking about just the local street. They have to have a plan that they're satisfied, and they're going to they're going to continue to enforce that traffic management plan. And whoever works on the bridge. Okay, let me go over a little bit. Since we're talking about the railroad, that railroad crossing on Stevenson is just as rough, if not rougher, oh, it's than it worse. was before they messed with it's it. It's worse. You can do over a train track in Florence and never even know you went over a train track. They're going to fix it. This this thing is it's rough. on the rail. Is it still on the? They got half of it done. Yeah. They've got a little more switch to change out. So <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> um, Mr. Biax, are we going to encounter any additional costs on your side? Not at the moment. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not unless the highway department tells me I have to do so. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you. Um, it's being recorded. <laughs> That's okay. Somebody, Maybe we need somebody to asked me if I could tell you what it's going to cost tonight to do this job. I said, heck no, I couldn't do it tonight. <laughs> right. <laughs> Good job. A lot. Yeah, thank you. Um, and J.D., maybe we need to take a little field trip up to Madisonville. You know, there's another one, too, the, the one in, um, in Newport. Have, have any of you seen that one by uh, Trout Dairy? Um, that one was done really really nicely as well. And I think actually Trout Dairy paid oh, for that. Dairy did that. Was There's it? the one on 27. Okay. Um, I don't think it's on, no, it's not on 27. 
um, let's see, it yeah, it would be around Monmouth and Twelfth, somewhere down around there. When it gets flooded. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's okay. All right. Well, thank you. Um, if there are no other questions, then we'll move on to the next item here under economic development and finance. Um, Mr. Blankenship, Ms. Pitts. Sure. Well, we've been taught, had somebody approach us about a rezoning of Turtonfoot and Stevenson, and Dave has the details on that. I have some details. <laughs> the, the, uh, if you remember, we talked some time ago about uh, we were approached about the rezoning at, at that property where the daycare is. There's the property an acre or two in front of that uh, daycare facility uh, that's in the same ownership as him. And we talked about they asked about rezoning it to commercial and so on. Uh, I was approached uh, uh, Thursday. Uh, the way they put that is, would the city be interested in rezoning the property for a retail use that sells merchandise at a reduced rate? So that's the use they want to put in there. So, is that a pawn shop? I, no, <laughs> not a pawn shop. I, 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 uh, An outlet store. What it sounds like to me is like, like, like a, a, a family dollar, dollar, dollar general, that's that kind of place. Dollar. So the way, so I said, I, I said that's not certainly anything that we talked about. We talked to something that's a little more benign in, in that it's a, an office type use. It wasn't a late at night kind of an operation, a bank branch, that sort of thing. Oh, another Cash Express. And <laughs> so the, this gentleman, he was a very nice gentleman to talk to. He says, if council doesn't want it, I'm not going to push it. I'll just go away. So uh, I said, well, we've got this committee meeting coming up. I'll bring it up and see what they feel. Bye-bye. <laughs> see ya. Uh, we ha uh, you can't drive a mile without going by a Dollar General or a... I, uh, all, all there's, there's just too many of them. Not a good corner. Well, that's fine. Uh, that's too visible of a yeah. family dollar, <clears throat> dollar. Dixie dollar Highway dollar. hidden. I, I, I know. I understand. What you're Did you get I mean, the numbers? Too, yeah, they're not very much. The, yeah. It's no. I, what know, what we were looking at was to try to get some numbers together to see, since we do have a few of these in the city now, to see what the tax benefit to the city was. And as David to get those numbers earlier, to see if in fact it would really even you know, tweak our interest. It's, it's, it's David shaking his head, so obviously it's yeah. not tweaking our interest. Homes right across yeah. the street from there. I would be appalled if my city did that to yeah. me in my neighborhood. Yeah. It's a shame Kathy isn't here because that could be like walking walking distance from her. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, that uh, I just told the gentleman I would bring it to you all, and and he was okay with whatever you said. So I will relay that to him tomorrow. All right. Thank you, David. Thank you. All right. Then the next item that was on the agenda regarding Smith Towing, I think we got a little bit ahead of the curve on this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah so, um, Mr. Blankenship, uh, Jeff Blankenship, was here at the last meeting and had mentioned that they had had some conversations with Corporex and that Corporex seemed to be in favor of what they were planning on doing. Um, apparently they're still in conversations and there's still some agreement that's being made. It does seem like they are working together and speaking together freely, which is a good sign, yeah. and um, that there's gonna be more to come. So we're gonna go ahead and just table that okay. issue, okay? Are we gonna have a committee meeting on that? I thought we were, but we said in September. The uh, September meeting. Okay. Yeah, the September meeting is when they'll that's present. They is that correct? Yeah. Okay. okay. It'd be a committee meeting. Okay. Right. All right. Right, Dave? That's perfect. Yeah. So with that then, could we get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Okay. Motion by Ms. Kyle. Second by Ms. Pitts. <coughs> Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Yeah. If you go to this thing, you might want to read three uh, or four weeks free of Tim Marshall Arts. Mm -hmm. <laughs>